As you all know, my name is Elijia Rubio. Um, and then something you guys might not know is the fact that four thirds, my bad, four sevenths of my family are immigrants. Uh, my parents crossed the border uh, for the last time with my sister and I in 2003. Uh, first, we were living in Watsonville, and then in 2008, we moved here to Hanford. But before that, the reason we moved to Hanford was because the rent was way too expensive. Um, and my parents couldn't afford it uh, with their field work income. Um, so we moved here in 2008. Um, and here in Hanford, my mom um, works, uh, continues working in the fields. And my dad works um, in a, with the factory job. Um, both very appealing um, in my eyes. Um, and the reason they're, you know, working there is because they didn't get um, the education they needed, the kind, you know, um, because they only went up to third grade or second grade, I believe, in Mexico. Um, and so, like, with this kind of background that I have, the poem that I came, I stumbled on, trying to search for one for this project, it, it kind of hit very close to home, and it really stood out to me, so that's why I wanted to read it. And it's called Clouds Above the Sky by Philip Levine. My father and mother, two tiny figures, side by side, facing the clouds that move in from the Atlantic, August 33. The whole weight of the rain to come, the weight of all that has fallen on their houses, gathers for a last onslaught, and yet they hold, side by side, in the eye of memory. What was she wearing, you ask? What did he say to make the riding clouds hold their breath? Our late August afternoons were chilly in America, so I shall drape her throat in a silken scarf above a black dress. I could give her a rope of genuine pearls as a gift for bearing my father's sons, and let each pearl glow with the child's fire. I could turn her toward you now with a smile so that we might joy in her constancy. I could bury the past in dust rising, dense rain falling, and the absence of sky so that you could turn this page and smile. My father and mother, two tiny figures, side by side, facing the clouds that move in from the Atlantic. They are silent under the whole weight of the rain to come. Uh, when I read this poem, I immediately got what Le Levine was trying to say. Um, and from what I interpreted is that, um, you know, children like, you know, Levine and I and my siblings and then, you know, other children of immigrant parents hate to see the fact that our parents will take the largest hit of what it's, what it is, what it means to be an immigrant um, or the, or what Levine calls the weight of the rain. And even though we wish we could fast forward through it, you know, fast forward to a time where we don't have to keep looking over our shoulders in fear of being questioned by the police uh, about our our legal status. Uh, we can't we can't do that because you know, obviously, um, for obvious reasons. Um, and it's just it's very sad, uh, especially you know, seeing your parents kind of you know avoid certain routes in order to not be deported um, and just living you know as a kid to uh, sometimes being gripped with fear of wondering whether or not something could happen at some point you know uh, they might be out at work and they get pulled over for a small thing and then uh, you know you get back home from school and they're not there anymore but thankfully that hasn't happened to us yet and most likely will not happen since we're in California and not Arizona. Um, and then, uh, moreover, I also noticed how Levine talked specifically about his mom in this uh, short poem. He, and even though he uh, saw his dad in the picture, he felt more for his mom. And just like I do, I know that my dad is very hardworking, but it's just my mom has been through so much, you know, um, that I just, the the third line, the third last lines um, from the first stanza stood out. Uh, it says, our last August afternoons were chilly in America, so I shall drape her throat in a silken scarf above a black dress. This, These lines, they reflect my feelings about my mom, how I, I see her work so hard and as you know she she's she told us that she's been working in the field since she was seven so she's almost been working in the fields for 31 years now 
Um, and seeing her struggle, you know, uh, because of the back pain and all that, um, I want to be able to comfort her in a way, you know, financially, to be able to uh, afford a doctor who can actually find out what's wrong with her um, or what's, you know, what's going on with her bones and why she's hurting um, and hopefully, you know, one day <laughs> heal her. Um, and so that's what I envision, me being able to provide for her and, you know, my dad too. Um, with this, I guess, uh, silken scarf, you know, uh, to shield them from the cold and what they've been through. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, overall he's saying that we have to experience these, these events, you know, this, this rain that has been present already and will continue coming and will stop at some times but then continue again because you know that's life um, and we just have to push through it and that's basically what I took from this poem.